Good morning and welcome to the Palm Sunday service. The question really is why Palm Sunday? So we hope that uh, we may understand something more, something a little more about Palm Sunday and uh, when it was prophesied and when it was spoken about in the Bible. Especially as we're reading in uh, the book of Zechariah. And there is a view from the Mount of Olives. Uh, Jesus would have come across the Mount of Olives and he would have come straight looking at this. And right there, if I get the, the uh, arrow on it, there is the, uh, the Golden Gate. Lion Gate or the Golden Gate. That is sealed up by the Muslims. This area is a, a Muslim burial ground because they don't want to let, they think they can stop the Messiah from coming through this gate here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course uh, a, that is where he would have walked up through. Yeah. And as the Bible says, he would sta feet would stand, he would be there and he's gone through that uh, mm -hmm. there on the Palm Sunday. And right into the temple area there <coughs> uh, at the back. Palm Sunday <coughs> Fulfilled prophecy. Great that we know that prophecy is fulfilled. Uh, not only in the book of Zechariah, but also of course in the book of Daniel is a little bit there too. And uh, especially in Daniel, there's the 70 weeks of Daniel's prophecy. Now the 69th week of Daniel's prophecy brings us up to around Palm Sunday. Daniel chapter 9, 25 and 26. And we could ask the question, how? Now, maybe tonight we look at this a little bit more and think about uh, the 70 weeks of Daniel and what that has to do with Palm Sunday and the Messiah. Well, 70 weeks really are heptat. Um, there's no point in thinking of the, the Hebrew uh, uh, word for that is, but a heptad is, is really speaking of a, a time span, an area. Uh, and so it's not really 70 literal weeks, but it's 70 times 7, which is 490 years, and maybe not even 490 literal years either. So 7 uh, equals... Uh, the first seven, uh, seven years equals 49, would be about 49 years. And that was when there was a decree made by King Artaxerxes, the Persian King Artaxerxes, to the rebuilding of Jerusalem. So that was made, uh, that brought up to the rebuilding of Jerusalem. He made a decree that Jerusalem would be built. And uh, that decree, that first uh, seven, it's a heptaph or a seven, right? That first section. Then there was the second, which would be 434 years. Takes us to Jesus' ministry and Palm Sunday. Some think maybe from his birth. Well, that is the second uh, uh, bit section of that 70 weeks of Daniel. Then the third, one week seven years. Uh, some would say that was fulfilled at, uh, fulfilled at uh, AD 70 when the temple was destroyed. Um, others would say that uh, there's a half week of it left yet to be maybe seven years or the half week yet to be fulfilled at the end of the world. Um, so that's where the um, debates come in. Uh, we're not going to worry about that this morning. We're going to keep it simple, I think. Why not rejoice? That's what we're thinking of. Why not rejoice? Is this a great time for rejoicing? We think we find a great crowd of people. Uh, we, I'm trying to follow on from a, uh, another uh, uh, teacher um, and... Uh, uh, she was really emphasizing uh, about this great rejoicing of all uh, these uh, crowd of people coming with Jesus into Jerusalem. And so the, the prophecy is about that. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. 
Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. They called it a colt. Must have been a male. Right? Why not rejoice? Goes on to say, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The river is, of course, the river of Euphrates, to the ends of the earth. So there it is, there's our section. Why not rejoice? Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. And so there was a real prophecy there that they were to get excited about this. Uh, and when Jesus asked the disciples to get this uh, donkey and the colt, I think... I think the old grey matter started to work over time. And I think they were thinking about this particular prophecy that was a fulfilled, that, that was spoken of by Zechariah and others long ago. And of course it speaks of his power. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. And so they're really I'm excited about it. Are you excited about uh, Jesus your King, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ? So there's his power. He's the powerful one, the ruler. His passion, you know, thinking about what he done for us. His person. What kind of a person this is? You ever think about him? And his plan. He's got a plan. Well, it's wonderful when the people have got a plan. They've got a vision. And, and what he planned and what he saw and what he wanted to do. Why not rejoice? So firstly, we think of the first word there. Power. His power. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Behold <coughs> means what? It's a call to look. Behold. In the Bible there was behold, now is the day of salvation. And so it was look. This is the day of salvation. Behold your king. So they had to look. And so it was a great challenge to them that the, their king was going to come. They were going to be, they weren't, they weren't going to always be without a king. But they would have a king. Come. And so it's a call to look. But it's not only a call to look, it's consider our ruler. We have to consider him. We consider that he's coming to us. Oh, there was none, uh, no king since. Uh, Zedekiah was the last king in Judah in 587. So there was no king there in Israel. There was no king over God's people. And of course, uh, here it says, Behold, your king is coming to you. Here is, he's showing himself. He's really coming. And we are to consider him. And we are to think of him. And so he's going to reign and he's going to rule. He's our sovereign. He's our leader. He's our ruler. He's our controller. He's the one we turn to for, for guidance. He's the greatest ruler of all. And many of our rulers will let us down. But he will not let us down if you trust him. If you put your heart and soul and your life, give it, hand it over to him. And so it was a great reason to rejoice. Wonderful to rejoice, to think about. And it was great hope, wasn't it? It was great meaning. 
and purpose. People were sad. People were lonely. People were disillusioned. And people had no hope in the world. And here was the one that could give them hope and meaning and purpose and raise them out of their doldrums. Ah, uh, you know, that's what he was coming to do. It wasn't to come to make you sad and, oh, here's the one, ah, oh, he's just a killjoy. He'll, 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 he upsets my sport in the one, the way that I want to, to, to run my life. Not at all. He wants to give you something that's better and he wants to give you a purpose and he wants to help you in all areas of your life to have a better life. And I encourage you, if you're listening on uh, whatever, that I encourage you to think about that and how that if you're feeling down in this, in this country of Ireland, he can give you a better life. He can give you hope and purpose. And he can help you through your great difficulties. So, why not rejoice then? And of course it's, what are they doing? They're joyfully announcing a new king. And what happens when a new king is announced? Uh, well, uh, well, they say, oh, we're going to announce a, a new king. You know, and they're very sad about it. <laughs> Not at all. They're most exciting, and that's why they had the lulavs, that's why they had the palm branches, and they were waving them. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just, oh, well, you know, I'm coming along. You know, like some of these people that walk along, and uh, they're really alive. And their the hands are going, you know, dead behind, hanging down their sides. <laughs> oh. Not at all. They were good. They were really excited. Because this was something to be excited about, wasn't it? Yeah. Joyfully announcing a new king. And you know, that's not just... They, they really were tuned to this. They really realized this. And they did want to joyfully announce a new king. But where did that come out of? Did people ever do that? Of course they did. Then each man hastened to take his garment and put it under him on the top of the steps. And they blew the trumpet saying, Jehu is king. Jehu is king. Now amazing. That Jehu is king. And we excited. And they were really excited that they had a new king in, in Israel, and it was Jehu. And what did they do? They put their garments down. And he walked over that. That was the red carpet, wasn't it? Hey? And so, there it is. You see, Jesus says, get a donkey. And, and the coat. And they put garments, and he sat on it. And so the crowd of people saw this. And immediately... They realized, whoa, what? Zachariah's prophecy. Here it is. And they all got excited. And they, they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful, isn't it? It's great. It's marvelous. Yes, it's they were announcing Jesus their king. And that's what it is all about, isn't it? Jesus is my king. Do you know I have a king? Do you know I have one who I can trust in? You know, it's not talking about Christianity or religion or something else. Or I have something better than you, but I have a person. I'm believing in Jesus and he's king of my life. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. And then, so, why not rejoice then? So we have his power, we're looking at, and his passion then. Secondly, his passion. He is just, and having salvation. He in himself has salvation. Isn't that amazing? 
And two, it's been announced that he has salvation for us. He can save us. Do you believe that he can save you? His perfect life. He had a perfect life and it really speaks of his righteousness. He is righteous and able to save. His perfect life. He never sinned. He is the Son of God. And it speaks of his great life. He, he, he is the perfect one and, and the per pointing on to the perfect sacrifice that he would perform. Dying for our sins. Taking our sin upon himself. We can't keep it, uh, live a good life. But he, he can help us. And he paid the price of our sins if we trust him. And he can take them away. And so his perfect life. His powerful sacrifice. He died on the cross for our sins. He brought salvation to us with his hand and holy arm. He died to save us and to set us free. He died, he, he proclaimed victory over death. He, he'll free the captives. As I said, his powerful sacrifice for our sins. He died to save us, to set us free. And so it's wonderful, isn't it? That he, when he said it is finished, he paid the debt of our sin. Fully and freely on the cross. So, it also thinks of his plenteous redemption. Yes, it's, it's not just in little terms. It's not just uh, meagerly. Not a meagre redemption, but it's a plenteous. It's a full and it's a free. And it's complete to pay the price of our sins to set us free. Mm -hmm. And to redeem us from the curse of the law. And to defeat the enemy. And to pay the price of our sin. Redeem us uh, from the old enemy. So, why not rejoice? Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. And so these people were called, those who were looking to God, were called to do that. And we are called today because we are uh, his children uh, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, we are called then out to shout, to, to rejoice and be glad for all he's done. His power, we looked at his passion, his death on the cross for us. And then his person. What do we think of his person? What kind of a person is this? You know, can I trust him? You know, what will he do for me? Well, we thought about how he died on the cross for you. But look at this person. Most of all people want to come and they want to show themselves off as great proud people. And they want to make a big boast about themselves and what they are and what they have done and where they trained and, and, and who am I? You know, look at me. I'm such a wonderful person. Well, I can tell you, Jesus wasn't like that. And we as Christians are not to be like that, are we? What was he? He was lowly and riding on a donkey. A coat the foal of a donkey. My dear friends, they are not terrible. He didn't even own this donkey. What in his... He only got the loan of it. The creator. The one who made this world and put it into place. Isn't allowed to have a donkey. Of his own to ride on. A place to lay his head. Maybe not even the pillow. To lay, to lay his head on. And yet. And so here is this person. He's lonely and riding on a donkey. A cooked, a male donkey. He's the fool. And there the mother and the fool come. They both come together. And the Lord <laughs> Jesus Christ is riding on this one. That's never been ridden before and he takes his creator, his master on so perfectly. Riding on. 
to bring him up and into Jerusalem. To fulfill that prophecy and to show that he truly is king. But he's shown how lowly he is and gentle. How, how meek he is. And yet he's not weak. He's strong. He's powerful. Yes. He's perfect. He's sinless. He's, he's, he's a strong ruler. And he's sovereign to reign and to rule your life. And the words he says is true and real. So he's, he's lowly. And riding on a donkey, a coat, the foal of a donkey. <laughs> but he is still conquering king. He's still conquering king. He's not given up that. He's not just a weak leader that's going to be led about here, this way or that way. Oh yes, Jesus may be laughed at. But the laughing was on your face or that person's face. And they will answer for it. <laughs> he still is conquering king. He is poor. Oh, we hear about people that said they came in on their private jet to Dublin, great uh, evangelist preachers. But here's the one who came from heaven. And he doesn't have a donkey to call his own. He doesn't have a Mercedes to come in on, to, to drive in on. He doesn't have a great horse all dressed up in wonderful royal adornments and, and a war horse, you know, that you think he should, that most of them thought he should have. He is poor. And he comes on this little donkey that even David did. He rode on a mule. But not many kings would ride on them on a donkey. They were a poor man's animal. They were a very meek little animal. A very nice animal, all right. But they were just a, be a beast of burden. Nothing more. Not the, the mighty horse like what uh, uh, Solomon had, the great stables he had and horses uh, that he had for war. He, he, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is poor. And he doesn't come like the natural person in the world uh, and, and all that you see. And uh, what else? You see, he identifies with his subjects. Because you know, he delights to take the weak things and the things that are not and to make them what he wants them to be. Why? So that no flesh can glory. No flesh can boast about what they are. Because all our boasting is in Jesus. And so he identifies with the weak and the meek and the lowly and the downcast and the downtrodden. And you know, the Church of Jesus Christ is advancing in many areas of the world that, where that is. We think of the, the Dalits in, in India and how they have embraced Christianity. And you know... <coughs> Their claim there is no caste at all. Of course, to be Christian is no caste. And lower, not, not even a uh, thought about being a caste. You know. And so the Dalits, you see, but they have Jesus. And they have his, his wonderful and so his greatest. And other parts of the world today, Christianity is advancing. Uh, and especially amongst those who are downtrodden. Many in North Korea and different parts of the world are listening to their MP3 players and they're listening to the Word of God and they're being built up and rich towards God. Poor in this world, but rich towards God. So he identifies with his subject. He doesn't say, oh, you're not worth the thinking about. The, the world would look at some of them and say, oh, I wouldn't be bothered with them. Well, yes, he does. And he is so concerned for people in whatever situation they are in. Mm -hmm. And whatever, how lowly they are. And he desires, his great purpose is to lift those who are weak and lowly. 
So don't be afraid to come to him. Don't be afraid to bring these things to him. And don't be afraid to trust him and to trust him as your king. He is a great person to believe in. Yes, he's concerned. And he wants to help. Uh, and he'll help you know, as you come and read about him in the Word because there is where you will see him. Not in the pictures, which are only a, <coughs> a 13th century idea of him. But in the Word itself, the Word pictures from God's Word, he identifies with the subjects. Why not rejoice? Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Oh, so they were called upon. Take a noise of it. Oh, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Go easy. Don't talk very much. Oh, keep that. What? What do you make this great noise about this man? What are you saying so much about Jesus? Well, they're saying, yes, you do. You make much about him. Oh, you do really get excited about him, don't you? Well, you see, we thought about his power. The power he has to rule and to reign in this world. The power to change lives. You know, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to those who believe. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God. His passion. And, you see, we couldn't be saved unless he died to save us. Bringing salvation to us with his hand and his holy arm. His person. Oh, he's so meek and mild. And gentle. And coming on the poor conveyance. Not even an animal that he calls his own. Yet he made it. But his plan. Well, what's his plan? What's his plan for this world? Have you got plans? Do you want to be in on his plan? Because you can have your plan, but if it doesn't, if it doesn't, uh, if it's not come in on Jesus' plan and God's plan, and if you don't want to say, well, I want to be in on his plan, my plan me means nothing. It's just a worldly plan. His plan. I will cut off, he says, the chariots from Ephraim and the horses from Jerusalem. <coughs> oh, they were great with their horses. And, and as I said, Solomon had a mighty stable of horses. It can be seen, you know. Uh, they found it in the, uh, you know, where, the, where they were. The battle bow shall be cut off. And to speak about the battle bow cut off means the missiles and uh, the Scud missiles and the, these great bomber planes and, uh, and these great uh, tanks and weapons, you know, like these soldiers use, uh, they'd be cut off. No use. Gone, done, finished. And he shall speak peace to the nations. There's the great peace. We talk about peace demonstrations and, and trying to make peace. But he shall make peace to the nations. No wonderful. The peace he has. His dominion shall be from sea to sea. Ah, the seas. Meeting right across the whole of the world. And from the river. The great river. Your river Euphrates to the ends of the earth. And that must have even got to Ireland. Because thought about Ireland at the end of the earth at one time. So, first of all, there would be no worldly weapons. These weapons, they're not worldly weapons. They're, they're, all the weapons of the world, all the great uh, things that Ireland has, you know, has, has a great army and all that, it's, a worldly, it's worldly weapons they have. All their tanks. I don't know whether they brought some of them on, on Patrick's Day Parade. They had a great one one time. But it's so amazing, isn't it? But they're worldly weapons, you see. And they'll all be cut off. And all the great weapons and all that America has and the power it has will be cut off. And, and, and they can do all the, uh, the great, uh, you can have all the great, you know, uh, 
uh, testing out these missiles and seeing how far they go and what they'll do. But he says, they'll be cut off. They'll be no use. But he shall speak peace to the nations. He is the one who will bring the proper peace. He's Prince of Peace. And so what? As it does say in, in I think, Isaiah, uh, chapter 11, that they'll not <laughs> learn the art of war anymore. There's an awful lot of money spent in the world today learning the what? The art of war. They're all amazingly trying to uh, learn it and do it, make it better and practice and, and they're trying to do all their different exercises better. But he says, no, no. They're not going to learn the art of war anymore. How wonderful. This is some great plan he has. Are you in on it? it it's, it's an amazing plan. No worldly weapons. They are gone. Not learn the art of war anymore. That's finished. How does he conquer? How does he conquer? He's our conquering king. His sword is the word of God. It tells us in Revelation that this sword comes out of his mouth. It's the word of God. And that will slay the nations. You know. They didn't have to speak. As I said one other time, there was an army of Sennacherib, the Assyrians, came against uh, Jerusalem. And they woke up one morning and the Assyrian army was dead. Most of them dead. And Sennacherib had to turn tail and go back to Assyria. And there he was assassinated by his two sons. Ah, God just spoke that night and the Assyrian army was gone. Just like that. Mm -hmm. In the blood that, just gone. Yeah. He died. His enemy is amazing, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, it tells us in Romans, as a chapter uh, 5, I said that he, you know, uh, a good man might consider to die for someone who was good. A man might think, consider to die for someone, but for someone to die for your enemy. Mm -hmm. And he died for his enemies. He died the just for the unjust mm -hmm. to bring us to God. You see, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. He didn't come to bring a sword he came to bring peace. He's Prince of Peace. Peace in our hearts and peace in our lives. Peace through his death on the cross. How wonderful, isn't it, that he is the Prince of Peace. And that's why he came to do that, to conquer. And he's the only one who can bring true and lasting peace into your life, into the world. He's the only one who can really do it. You can try it, but it doesn't really fully work. And you see, Jesus can free you. You're burdened. Uh, free you from the enemy. The enemy of the devil, you see, is in control. And he's the one who wants the battles and the wars. And he's the one who, who wants the domestic violence. But Jesus can free you. And he can, his, he, he uh, will set you free from whatever bondage, whatever is holding you, if you trust him and give your life into his hand. And of course, Jesus' rule is global, isn't it? It's all over the world. It's the whole world. Uh, and amazing. That's what it was pointing to, and that's what he would do. And uh, he's the one who can conquer. Will you trust him? Will you believe him? Will you come to him and, and give your life in, into, into his hand? Do you want to be in his plan? Mm -hmm. Great thing, isn't it? You really want to be in his plan. <coughs> then you have to come to him in repentance and faith and to believe in him. 
Do you want to be free? Because Jesus said, if the Son sets you free, or we read in God's Word, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. And He can free us from whatever is holding us. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, yes, this great, the blood of the covenant, He died to set us free. New agreement, a new covenant, the covenant he made, the New Testament in his blood. I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore, what? Double to you. How amazing is it? So, he says, he'll set us free. We're in prison, you see. Until we trust him. You know. We're in a dry place. And people know how, what it is to have no water and rain. He says I will set you prisoners free. That's the true freedom. To be in the prison is to be held by the devil you see. And he can set us free. From that. Return to your stronghold. You see they had left the stronghold. They had left believing in God. Just like our own nation, our country, Ireland and, uh, and Europe. We are to need to return to God. We need to return to the Word of God. We need to return to read it again. To trust Him. And to have hope in Him. A prisoner of hope. Yeah, there's some hope there to be delivered. And that God can restore those things that are lost and regain. To give our life into his hand and to believe in him. And so that he was going to do and he was pointing forward to the Lord Jesus, to the Messiah coming. Uh, and that God was going to do a new thing through the people of God. And of course it has went on that the Gentiles have been used. To bring the gospel message to the world. By God's help. Why not rejoice? Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. And we thought of his power. The great power he has. You believe that he is that. You, know, you must believe it, you see. Because that's the only way you can trust him. And, and, and rely upon him. Confidence in him. His passion. The passion to save. And his person. The person who he is. He's not the, the high and mighty man. He's lowly. And he comes to us at the point of our need to help us. His plan is to save you. His plan is global. His plan is to bring peace. The proper peace. Not the, the peace that's in the world. But the peace that God can bring in our hearts peace through his death on the cross. So, why not rejoice? I'm sure there must be something there to rejoice about. And the people were rejoicing because here was the answer coming. And that's why they, they waved their, their, their palm branches. And that's why they shouted, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, who in the highest. And they they were really Christ saved now. Mm -hmm. I want to be saved now. Oh, save us now. Mm -hmm. And maybe they expected it right away. Mm -hmm. But of course God was working to a plan. Do you believe that Jesus is coming again? Mm -hmm. And he will restore. He will save. And he will bring in his kingdom to be seen. Mm -hmm. But now we need to be trusting in him and in his kingdom. And believing in him. And waiting on him. Thank you for listening. And we pray that God will indeed bless you and help you. Do take time to visit the website too. You're welcome to do that. And I hope that you have a blessed uh, Palm Sunday. And uh, to rejoice more in his great and wonderful blessing. Amen.